One of our clients kind of launched their new business and they are a production company doing lots of music videos. And now that they're kind of in this process, they're learning a lot about what the production looks like, how to make it go smoothly. And because as an artist, as a label, as a business of any kind, if you're in the music business, you're gonna be doing music videos at some point in your career. And to help you avoid some of the pitfalls that are very common with music video productions, today I wanted to give you an overview of what a typical music video process is gonna look like and really what even my law office does when we are overseeing these productions for our clients. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over the basics of making a music video. Hi guys, I'm Miss Crystal. I'm an entertainment attorney, public speaker, and author of How to Keep Your Dukes Up in the Music Business. I'm the owner of Dukes Up Records, and most importantly, I'm an independent musician. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss our weekly videos helping you with your music career, getting you to that next level, and teaching you how to stay legally protected. By popular demand, we now have How to Keep Your Dukes Up in the Music Business as a direct digital download meaning you can get the book directly to your device right now. And this is basically your A to Z guide. It's everything that you need to know from the day-to-day -day stuff of being an independent musician to understanding copyrights, understanding trademarks, and even we give you the contracts that you need in order to stay legally protected. So make sure you get your copy today. The link is down in the description below. Stepping outside the creative for a second, because when we talk about who is the most important person or the most important people on your team as far as creating the visual, of course, your director is gonna be super important, your director of photography or your DP, meaning the camera guy is gonna be really important, but other than the creatives, the most important person on your music video team is your producer. And I would never ever have you do a music video if you don't have someone specifically dedicated to helping on the production side. So meaning this person is going to be helping with organizing, putting together a schedule, communicating with the team, scheduling meetings. It's everything having to do with the actual logistics of the shoot, which quite frankly, no one really wants to deal with. And if we don't have someone who's dedicated to this, that means that you know the band might be working together, or the artist is kind of doing it. And it's fine, you know, someone's gonna end up doing the job, but I find that with a lot of productions, before we actually get there, if there's at least a producer in place, then all of a sudden everything starts flowing a lot more smoothly. And then the day of the production goes so much better. And trust me, it's gonna be so much more fun if you're not kind of stressing about stuff that otherwise could have been dealt with ahead of time. From personal experience, when I first started, I was in my teens, and so, you know, at that point, you have no money to pay anybody, so you certainly don't have money to pay a producer. So as an artist, and from my personal experience, you might step into that role, okay? And that's, and that's fine, but that means you are gonna have to do all of that work. It's not a whole lot of fun when you're trying to focus on the creative stuff, but at the end of the day, if you do need to step in and do it, just do it. But that means, of course, things like catering, things like crafty, right? So having like a table dedicated to, you know, food and drink that the crew can have throughout the shoot so be willing to take on that responsibility if you need to but having someone to really help keep things organized is gonna make your life so much easier especially if you are the artist trust me on this <laughs> now on more of the creative side you are gonna want to have a shot list um, and or a treatment, right? So when we talk about a treatment, I can even talk about my process, right? So when I'm writing a music video, sometimes I'll listen to the song and my treatment will be going through the actual music video and timestamping it. So I'll say, you know, at 15 seconds, this is kind of what we're seeing. This is what's happening. And then at 45 seconds and then a minute and a half. And so I'll timeline basically everything I want to happen in the music video. And from there, you're gonna create your shot list. And the shot list is gonna be, okay, so how do we actually achieve that whole story or kind of what I was saying in the treatment? And so it will be, we need to block out all of these performance shots. We need to block out all of the storyline shots. And so these two documents will be kind of working documents as you get closer and closer to the actual production day. Now, you know, if you're not that experienced with kind of writing, a treatment don't feel intimidated by it the way i like to say is just kind of word vomit so as you're thinking in your wildest dreams what could this potentially look like and then from there we typically reverse engineer so it's going to be now we got to figure out how do we actually achieve that where's the location going to be that we need to get in order to get this particular visual do we need to hire actors what kind of crew do we need and so you as the creative you kind of coming up with that vision is the first step but like i said the treatment's going to evolve and I've had all kinds of music videos where I write the treatment. It's so elaborate. It's so ridiculous because I basically want to do like a full length feature film. 
and we just decide that we need to make some modifications because let's say the location doesn't make sense for the particular visual that I'm trying to come up with. And so we'll end up changing the treatment and modifying it over time. And sometimes we end up, you know, completely changing it last minute because we find a cooler location, we come up with a cooler idea and that's all okay. But the earlier you can get started on the creative, the sooner that you can start working with the team, like your producer to say, okay, how do we achieve this? What kind of set design? What do we need to buy? What do we need to rent and then that can develop and help with the process so that ultimately you can get to whatever finished product that you're trying to achieve. As you get more experience, you're gonna end up finding that you have to be very flexible as well. Like I said, there's gonna be changes that need to happen as you're developing and figuring out how do we execute this vision. But, you know, for example, we just shot a music video for a song off of my new album, and the music video went through several variations of the theme, of the style, of what I wanted to accomplish. And ultimately, by I think the third time that we had rescheduled it because of all these things that we ran into, all these problems, and we just found that we actually needs to completely redo the treatment which you know of course artistically is kind of frustrating but nonetheless you got to be resilient you got to say okay it kind of sucks but you're gonna move on you come up with something different and then get excited about it and try to make it as good as you absolutely can and so be flexible and understand that even prior to the production you gotta make changes but on the actual production day you're probably gonna have to make changes as well because things happen People don't show up, design doesn't show up, wardrobe malfunctions. Um, and so, you know, you kind of, with your shawless, you end up finding that you can have kind of the big vision of everything that needs to be accomplished, but in a more minimalistic, you gotta make sure you get like performance shots, get a ton of performance shots. So if everything else goes wrong with the storyline, at least you have the main guts of the song of your singer singing the words and you can cut something together. And this is all stuff that you guys are gonna learn with experience and shooting more and more music videos. The next thing that you guys need to keep in mind when it comes to your music video productions are contracts. There are two that you wanna have on every single production. And we can even go above and beyond just that, but a minimum of two types of contracts. One is your location agreement, and the location agreement is very simple. It just says whether you're in someone's house or you're in a warehouse, wherever you are, that you are getting the permission to actually show that space in your music video. And I think that a lot of artists will go and shoot somewhere and obviously they get that consent. When someone gives you their verbal consent, that's called a limited license. It means they said you were okay to do it, but the problem is that if it's a limited license, that person can come back later and say, I changed my mind. I don't want you showing my location. And if you don't have a location agreement saying you get to use it and show it and they can't say anything about it, then you know technically they can get your video taken down. So it's a big deal. Make sure you have even the most simple location agreement giving you that consent and basically saying that they can't revoke it. And the second agreement is called a crew agreement. You can call it a production agreement, whatever you want to call it. But basically what it says is that the cast and the crew, everyone working on the production are agreeing to a certain set of terms. Now, I'm not gonna go through the entire agreement with you because that'd be a very long video, but basically a crew member agreement gives you ownership of what is created, right? So it's gonna be things like the footage, it's gonna be things like pictures. It gives you the right to show, of course, whoever's appearing in the video, but also the cast and crew for behind the scenes, right? So I don't know about you, but I love having behind the scenes and showing how we made the video afterwards. And so, you know, you wanna make sure you have permission to use what's called people's likeness, right? So you actually get to show them in the pictures. So if you don't have that authorization, again, someone can come back later and say, hey, I changed my mind. I don't want you showing me in your music video. And so you have to take down the video. Um, so there's all kinds of like key terms that go into this type of agreement. But the point just being, you wanna make sure at a minimum, you own the final music video and that there's not gonna be a big fight with your director or your DP or anybody else that might have a claim to what you ended up creating together. And besides making sure that you own the final video, there's also the footage, right? So the individual files that you're gonna get from your camera guy, and that's gonna be used to actually edit the video together. And so we've run into problems where someone holds the footage hostage and they go, you have to pay me money. And then, you know, I have the only copy and, and it's just like the craziest stuff that I've dealt with as an attorney, but the stuff happens. And so if someone didn't sign an agreement saying you own the you own the footage you own the final work product I can't say anything about it these are problems that you know you're potentially gonna run into so clear it up have one simple agreement and you're good to go 
Although not a contract, kind of within the same realm of protecting yourself legally, have insurance whenever possible. And you can even go and get like a one day insurance plan from some of these companies. I've Googled before and found a company and it will just be liability insurance in case someone falls and gets hurt, in case someone breaks a certain piece of equipment and now they're coming after you to pay for it because the only reason they got hurt, the only reason they broke their camera was because they were there doing your music video. Make sure you also have a hard drive. Try to get a new hard drive for every single production. The wonderful thing, go on to Amazon, you can get a two terabyte drive, I think for 50 or 60 bucks now, so it's pretty inexpensive. And if you have a separate drive, then that means you can edit on that drive. That means that you can basically have everything contained and organized. So, you know, of course, drives get lost, things get broken. And so if you can try to have a new drive for every single production, that's a good idea. But also remember, you're gonna be sharing that drive, right? The editor's gonna have the drive. You know, at some point, the director might see the drive. If you have extra projects on the same drive, that means other people are gonna see your stuff. And just from a confidentially, confidentiality, excuse me, kind of standpoint, you wanna make sure that you're kind of keeping things, you know, separate whenever possible. So try to get separate drives per music video. And of course, when it comes to paying your cast and crew, this is something that earlier in your career, you're gonna have to probably negotiate, try to get discounts or just get people to work with you because they like you and they think that you're cool, they think you're creative and they wanna see you succeed. But you know, whenever possible, throw your cast and crew something. And I have just found over time that even when you can't pay, let's say a lot of money, but you can at least pay 50 bucks or just something to acknowledge the fact that someone gave their time and energy to you um, and just to show your gratitude. It really goes a long way. And even if you can't pay, doing something like getting food for the cast and the crew and making sure it's good food. Don't get the crappy pizza, like get something that they're really gonna like. And there's ways to do it so that your cast and crew just feel very much appreciated. And sometimes that's just by thanking them. Um, something that I've done for almost all of my music videos is in addition to, of course, you know, when we can pay, when we can feed, when we can do this and that, just make everyone feel fantastic. In addition to that, giving things like handwritten notes. That might not be you, that was kind of my style, but doing handwritten notes to every single person and just saying, I appreciate you so very much. I appreciate that we got to share this experience together. Um, you know, and then hopefully they like that. When I receive stuff like that, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy and you know, I like feeling appreciated. So um, I know that goes a long way for the people who are gonna work with you, support you and help you, especially if you can't pay them or pay them full rate. So keep that in mind as you continue to grow in your career and do more music videos with new collaborators. We've been talking a whole lot about music videos and I will be sure to link a playlist at the end of this video with all the videos that I've done. I am my creative director, I've directed most of my videos and I'm excited obviously to be able to share kind of what I do with you guys, including our latest music video, Holy Water, which is off my new album, Dangerous Daughters. If you wanna check it out, just search Miss Crystal on any music platform. We just released our new online course on how to start your record label. And I actually have a section in the course dedicated to actually talking about a crew member agreement. I provide you the form, I go through what it looks like. And so if you are someone who is starting your record label or you do have a record label, that's definitely something that you should check out. Link down in the description below. Be sure to come say hi on social media. It's always cool to meet you guys, hear what you're doing in your careers and let me know what kind of music videos you're working on. I'm gonna get out of here, but thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any videos from your new favorite redhead. I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm Miss Crystal. Bye.